بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد ما بعد السيستس سبحان الله بيمدي وسبحان الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى has his own ways in which he works now many times we get <coughs> frightened with circumstances uh the world seems to be overwhelming difficulties seem to pile on one on top of the other uh all our resources seem to disappear everyone we trusted everyone we relied upon uh every source that we uh looked towards for help seems to vanish and uh, you get frightened but remember <clears throat> that is a sign that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your dua that you have been making dua for his help and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help is coming when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help comes the first thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is he removes everything else from the scene completely clears the table nothing is left and then the help of allah comes so that when the help of allah comes not only are you helped not only are we helped but it becomes clear to everyone that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah that nothing happens without the will of allah that only the will of allah is supreme now this is very important to remember because when we are going through this phase where everything around us seems to be disappearing or collapsing around our ears we get frightened and we run away now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us examples of this of how he how he operates in the quran and i'm sure if we reflect and think in our own life we would have seen many such instances but anyway let's stick with the quran take the story of musa alayhi salam put yourself in that situation where you are in ancient egypt uh you are in the great uh pharaonic empire an empire of legends practically where people are <clears throat> which people talk about that empire till to this day for its time at its time the most powerful wealthiest uh, empire with all kinds of um, scientific uh, things that they did uh, the development the calendars Uh, elaborate mythology fabulous temples and what not um they were known for their astronomers astrologers magicians soothsayers uh fortune tellers right uh, the the magic that the egyptian magicians did uh it really doesn't even exist but uh, people who know magic they talk about that in reverential tones uh, this is that that magic is was something in a in a different class altogether <clears throat> nobody uh, today can can even claim to come come anywhere close to that now this was the empire now we know that the astrologers of uh, of firaun in this case ravas is the second Uh, they said to him that a child is going to be born among the bani israel which was the enslaved population of egypt at that time the people who inter- very interestingly how uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes people's conditions these were the people who came in the time of yusuf alayhi salam when yusuf alayhi salam was the prince of egypt when he was the governor of egypt when he was ruling in the name of the pharaoh and the farman the edict that the pharaoh uh, sent out he said you your word will be law and you will be obeyed in everything by my people and the only thing in which i will have superiority over you is for the throne now imagine get this kind of free reign of power was given to uh yusuf alayhi salam who was the grandson of 
Ishaq alayhi salam, whose name was Israel. So these were the people of Bani Israel. So Yusuf alayhi salam was given, and in his time, <coughs> when he brought his parents and his family and the people of Bani Israel, they came and they settled in Egypt. Now obviously, you can imagine that they must have passed uh, a period, you know, we don't know how many uh, centuries or decades or centuries where these people were highly respected, they were powerful, they were very wealthy. The fact that somebody like Karun, who was also from Bani Israel, had this legendary wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, uh, in the same time shows that these people were uh, at some time very wealthy and so on. But by the time they came to the period of uh, when Musa alayhi salam was, Allah was going to send Musa alayhi salam to them, um, their fortunes had changed. And uh, they were in a decline. Uh, they were probably, I mean, we know, we know about Karun, but obviously he, he probably wasn't the only one who was wealthy. So there were some other people among them who were wealthy. Uh, but for the most part, they were enslaved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Pharaoh had issued an edict that all their male children, boys who are born to them, should be slaughtered, should be killed. And the girls should be left alone. The girls should not be killed. I imagine the level of uh, humiliation and subjugation that means. Now, at that time, the astrology and the reason for that any um, of Firaun was that the astrologers told Firaun that uh, a child is going to be born among these people, Bani Israel, who will be the cause of the destruction of your empire. Uh, he will be. He will destroy your empire. So, imagine the the power of the Pharaoh, such absolute power, which today I'm sure there are many in the world who want that, but uh, they don't have it. Even the ones who have the power, they have to go through all kinds of elaborate. They have to weave a web of lies and propaganda and all kinds of corruption. Uh, the Pharaoh didn't need any of that. He simply issued an order to say that all the male children of Bani Israel should be killed as soon as they are born and uh, the girls can be left. Now, th th therefore, there was an elaborate spy system. As soon as a child was born, it would be informed and the child would be. The soldiers would come to the house, take the child from the arms of the mother, cut its throat or kill it in some other way and give it back to the mother. This was the situation in which Musa alayhi salam was born. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to keep him alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended to use him for his purpose. So, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Now, think about that. Put yourself in that place and say, if you had this task of saying, preserve the life of this child, what would you do? The first thing that I would do was, would be to hide the child. Right? In some way or the other, um, using some subterfuge, using some kind of means, I would hide the child. I would disguise the child, I would spirit it away, take it away, far away from Egypt, uh, and, and, and then raise it somewhere else, where the power of Pharaoh was, uh, was not known or not felt or not so strong. Right? But what does Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He sent Wahi to the mother of Musa alayhi salam, that when you fear that your child is going, might be discovered, right? Put him into a basket and throw the basket into the Nile. Now, can you imagine? I mean, this is like saying kill the child, practically, because not even a boat, right? Not even a waterproof box. Uh, not, a, not a vessel which will float. Nothing. Basket. And that also the basket, throw it into the Nile. The huge river known for its crocodiles, throw it into the night. And then, you might say, well, okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make this thing float away and go off to some remote place and then maybe some farmer or fisherman or somebody finds this little little child and says, no, no, no. This Nile passes through and flows through the palace of Pharaoh. And why not? We all have seaside, riverside, waterside properties. 
if you are the king of the place and you own the place, then you know what stops you from having the river come into your house. And that's exactly what was ha what happened there. The river flowed through uh, the whole river, or or a channel of the river flowed through uh, the palace of Fidon. So Musa is the little baby is put into the basket. The mother puts the basket basket in the river. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "We strengthened her heart. We supported her." Otherwise, she would have spilled the beans. She would have let it be known to people that she is in this predicament. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to save, save Musa alayhi salam. So Allah did not allow that to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported her. So, she does that. So, the thing you are seeing here is what? Obedience. Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in a situation where the person, the abs, in this case the the woman, uh, the awat, does not know the reason, doesn't understand it, doesn't make any sense to her, but she obeys. <laughs> so she puts the baby in the basket. Now the basket, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes this basket to flow into the palace of Pharaoh. And it doesn't flow in from one side and flow out the other side. No, it flows in there. It is found by the people. It is found by the wife of Pharaoh. They take out the baby. And they are absolutely delighted. Oh, we found the baby. The uh, Ramesses the second at that time had no children, so he had uh, the wife of Pharaoh takes him, takes the little baby to her husband. But the husband is smart. He is the king. So he calls the astrologers. He said, "Look, this is what has happened. Here is this baby. It's obviously not from our race." Uh, this is uh, from the Bani Israel. So check him out. And the astrologers check him out and imagine what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not um, put curtains over their eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes them to recognize the baby. Then they say, this is the one that we had been searching for. This is the one for whom, because of whom, 70,000 others got killed, uh, you know, Sad deal for them, but now we got this one. So kill him. Now imagine all the resources, all the imagined, um, all the possible imagined um, ways in which this child could have been saved. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala removed all of them. The child is now in the hands of Pharaoh. He is holding the child. All he has to do is to drop him on the ground. Most probably it was a marble floor. Uh, and from the hands of the, of the Pharaoh, uh, you know, tall man, the baby would have hit the ground and its skull would have been smashed. It would have died. Or the Pharaoh could have killed him or had him killed in any other way. But that doesn't happen. The wife of Pharaoh, Asya Radhiallahu Anha, who later on became Muslim, and Allah mentioned her in the Quran. She says to him, "This is a baby. This baby will be good or bad depending on how we raise him. He will be raised as our son, as our child. We have no children. He will be a source of of benefit for us. So don't kill him." And the man listened to his wife, and he did not kill the baby. And then the rest, as we say, the rest is history. The point I want to make here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to save somebody, then there is no force on the face of the planet which can kill that person or which can harm that person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not use subterfuge, Allah does not use deception, Allah does not use any, um, you know, any means in order to make his will happen, Allah does what he wants to do directly, clearly, in your face. And nobody can stop him if he wants to do it because he owns the land. The land does not belong to Pharaoh. The land does not belong to this or that uh, king or, or, or queen or, no, or uh, you know country. The, the land belongs to Allah. The earth belongs to Allah. The hukum of Allah runs on the earth. And no matter who, which king or which government uh, plays games and imagines or, or runs the, the things that they run the place. The place is run by Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is what is the truth and this is what happens and this is what will happen. 
So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to understand these realities, this, these fundamental beautiful truths that the Qur'an al-Karim came to teach us and to free our hearts from all the stress and trouble and fears and aspirations and hopes that are associated with makhluk, with creatures and open our hearts only to go and only to His glory and majesty. That we say, We worship only you and we seek help only from you and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. وَصَلَّى اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ نَبِيِّ الْكَرِيمُ وَعَلَىٰ عَلِهِ وَسَحْبِهِ الْمَيْنِ بِرَحْبَةِ كَر